watch. Yeah. But he, as he was fun, he was brutal. He was a fun, brutal running back to watch. He wasn't flashy. He wasn't. He would knock the living crap out of you. And that's what I enjoyed about him. And that's why he gave that team that personality. Why do you think? I mean, it's like you got a few years left in him. Why do you mm-hmm. think? This year after the end, what I, th- what I think is happening with a lot of these guys is when they start getting that one year where they get injuries, they get nicked up, and they don't feel right the whole year and everything. If they've been in the league for six or more years, we're going to start seeing people go, you know what, I'm not going to be able to come. I'm not going to try to come back from this. I'm just going to go ahead and take my best interest at heart mm-hmm. and go ahead and walk away from the game. And that's what we're going to start seeing more and more of. I think guys that have been in for seven, eight, nine years, you're going to start seeing them leaving the game sooner as it comes along. Well, especially with him, he's such a bruiser. Oh man. yeah, he's took an ass whooping. Yeah, he's got he's one of the most ran running backs in the NFL over a, since he's been in Seattle. He's been one of the guys with the most carries. Mm-hmm. So it, he's coming up on thirty. It's it, it's 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 that time for him him to go. He timed it pretty well. It's like Maurice Jones Drew timed it pretty well when it was time for him to go as well. He took a beating and everything like that. It was time to move on. He went to Oakland. He had them injuries, and then he realized, hey, it's time to just go on. And then after the injuries that Marshawn Lynch had this year, he was he thought the same thing, and he was like, it's, it's time to go. All right. Um, Hall of Famer. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Uh, first ballot? De- he's probably not going to be just because – the people in the in the media will be like, well, look what he did to us. He was always a douchebag. Blah, blah, blah. No, he was like everybody else. Don't want to fucking talk to y'all. But I would put him in first ballot. That, but that's just me. But I think I he, he'll make it in. I he, he definitely makes it in. Yeah, if some of these other guys are going in that I see going in, this guy needs to go in. Yeah, he, he's a Hall of Famer for sure. I don't think he's first ballot, but I think he's definitely a Hall of Famer. Um... But he definitely deserves to be in there and his impact of the game. And regardless of what he, what kind of bias you have against because he didn't want to ask you a question, you need to look at the talent now, how he treated the media. <laughs> not be one of the criteria. I mean, I, I don't know if that what uh, they take in. And I know you want to get on the whole tangent with T.O., but we can talk about that another time. But, um, uh, but yeah, that's why I say regardless of that, he's one heck of a talent, and um, he definitely should be in the uh, Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Um. Calvin Johnson, the other guy that I don't know if it's I know it's been finding out that I haven't seen anything official yet that he retired, but it was talking about that he told Jim Caldwell He told Jim Caldwell and going people in the team that he was gonna retire after a year was over. So, um if he does retire and then talk a little bit about Calvin Johnson and and what he meant to the game as far as uh, being the top receiver over the over the well, him and guys like Randy Moss and everything redefined what it was to be a wide receiver. Big, fast, scary, athletic. Yeah, very scary. Those type of guys. And they redefined what it is to be a, uh, a wide receiver. And he he was one of, the, one of the new school guys to come in and start that trend with having that big guy that can go and do pretty much everything at the wide receiver position. Yeah. Heck, the most yards ever out of a wide receiver for a season. Mm-hmm. And look, he didn't really, in Detroit, he didn't really have the best flipping quarterbacks. Yeah, Matthew Stafford for a while, but before that, who did he have? People don't even remember who he had One of the, before St- Matthew Stafford. Wasn't Kittner one of his quarterbacks? Who? John Kittner? Probably. <laughs> it, it, probably. That's how I bad remember, we don't I remember, remember, I remember shit. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say, I remember him being his quarterback. Back. But he did that with these guys. It, 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 it's he's definitely definitely up there as one of the best wide receivers ever to ever ever to play. What's the do you buy the whole joke about Detroit ruining careers? <laughs> no, I just think people <laughs> went out. <laughs> Everybody was just going in on that, and then I think Barry Sanders came to came to the defense and something like, no, he don't. Careers were last. I love Detroit and everything like that. So, um, no, man. Listen, Calvin Barry got, got out because he was tired of taking an ass whooping. Yeah. That's why I say, man, Calvin Johnson is does what he does. And 
And uh, they call that man Megatron for a reason. He's just, just so big, man. And another guy that just like to be physical when you catch him the ball and everything like that. And uh, you, you admire his talent from from afar and everything like that. So I, I like when I did kind of watch games on, you admire his talent. And, and he's he's one that's got a few years left too. But like Kevin said earlier on the Marshawn Lynch uh, case that. You probably gonna see some of these guys. You get them twinging injuries and stuff like that, and where you don't feel right the whole season and everything like that. It's just you, you don't want to do it anymore. Would you rather live healthy for the rest of your life or go through living like some of these guys that played in the '80s and the, you don't want to live like that? Yeah, and, and both of these guys, as far as uh, Marshawn Lynch and Calvin Johnson. I mean, you don't never hear their name really bad in the news as far as financially things. So it seemed like most of the part they they know they know. Marshawn how Lynch has not spent a dime of his football contracts. He has lived off his five million dollars of endorsement money and his beast mode clothing line. So he still has fifty million dollars in the bank that he has yet to touch from his football contract. It's a smart man, huh? <laughs> you can do that man, shit man, when you your money. you can do money, that right? shit when you got five million dollars coming in. You still live in Compton. Yeah. He still lives like right around the neighborhood of where he used to live. Mind you, he's got a lot nicer house than he used to have, but he still lives there. I only know that because I seen him on Hank when he got his fish tank money. <laughs> nice. So yeah, man. Uh, Calvin Johnson is Hall of Famer. With the way they're putting people into the Hall of Fame now, yes. First ballot? No. I wouldn't put him in first. If T.O. don't go in on the first ballot, he don't go in on the first ballot. I agree with that, yeah. He, he, he's a Hall of Famer. Um, with that, he has put us some impression numbers everything like that. And like Kevin said, who has his quarterback been before Matthew Stafford? And even Matthew Stafford had his moments. Not Hall of Fame quarterbacks. <laughs> Do you yeah. that much? Yeah, exactly. So, this guy to me... Is going to be in the Hall of Fame. It's going for him. I I can see him. It take him longer uh, to get in the Hall of Fame than with Marshawn Lynch. Which, nah, probably. I think they probably go in almost together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, man. Prop, props to those guys and uh, wishing the best. Uh, now we're going to there the Peyton Manning thing. A lot of no ring people going into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's going to what's going to start happening. Uh, not going to talk about Peyton Manning yes, and, until he actually announces it, but there's speculation saying he's going to retire. So uh, once that comes, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're having that discussion about Peyton Manning. When Chris Harris come out and said that he's probably running off into the sunset, yeah, I'm kind of taking it as Peyton Manning's going to be gone. I mm-hmm. think they already know. They already know, and I, and like people have said, uh, as far as uh, if Peyton Manning going to retire, he doesn't want it. To, he doesn't want to take away. What exactly. Denver has he doesn't want so. to take away from the team just to be himself, especially when he knows he really didn't have a lot to do with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't really want to take away from the team when you know you didn't have that big gigantic amount to do with because it. Because now they won kind of in spite of you. Yeah. Throughout the season, and it now it becomes a whole show of like, okay, well, they won a Super Bowl, but now Peyton's going to retire, so it's. He don't want to do that. Let Denver as a team enjoy it. Uh, then win the championship, mm-hmm. and then then he bring it to himself. I'm pretty sure weeks later, where he's going to announce his retirement. I believe he's going. To, I don't see him going anywhere else. I, I I feel like he's going to do that. The way that they was talking that they had a meeting before the Super Bowl, where it was none but him and Demarcus Ward came almost came to tears or were in tears. They know. They they know it was. It's, it's obviously, man. He's just trying to keep it in house. Chris Harris know. wouldn't have said what he said on the interview mm-hmm. if it wasn't going to happen. Exactly. So I agree with you there. All right. Well, that's enough football for now. Until oh, we get look, there. it's Jackass and his Oikos protein snack. <laughs> uh, the, the guy he's talking about, since y'all can't see, is Cam Newton. So, <laughs> so uh, we just going. The NBA All Star is coming up this uh, weekend. I, well, they got a lot. It's because you is got it this got, fucking weekend. Yeah, this Holy weekend shit. you got NBA All Star weekend. You got Daytona, right? Daytona Five Hundred is this weekend. A lot of sports things. The member is always on one, and then NHL is also like all. Oh, it's always like three. I think Daytona. I think Daytona is knocked back a week. Is it? I swear, I remember all three of these being on here together. It's yeah, NBA, well, it used to NHL, be. Yeah, it used to be one, and then NASCAR. It used to be one, but it's knocked back a week. NHL already had their All Star game. Okay, they had it. 
two weeks ago. Gotcha. All right, well. They're... They had it during the Pro Bowl. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're just going to kind of pick, a, you know, the advance and just go from there. And what we're going to have. First one we're going to have is the uh, BBVA Compass Rising Star Challenge where they do the Team USA versus Team World. Um, Tim Kevin doesn't mind. Well, he, well, he got a rookie. And, uh, Justice Winslow in it? Uh, he's not in it. So, How the fuck you don't have Justice Winslow in it? Let's see. I'm looking. I don't see his name here. So, uh, how? Uh, what? Well, here's here's Team U.S. roster. They got, t- what the- they got Clarkson, Hood, Levine, Noel, Okafer, Parker, Payton. Trying to see if they know their first name, last name. Uh, Jordan Clarkson, Rodney Hood, Zach Levine, Nernest Noel, Jahil Okafer. Not everybody's a nut job about it. Exactly like I am. Sorry, that's why I had thought about. It. I was like. Jabari Parker, Alfred Payton, D'Angelo Russell, Marcus Smart, Carl Anthony Towns, the world uh, team rocker is Bojan Bodakovic. Uh, Don't even Capella, try to do the world. Mario Hazonia, Nikola Jokic, Nikola Miritich, Emmanuel Moutier, Raul Neto, Chris Tasprazingis, Dwight Dwight Powell. What'd you call him? Chris Tasprazingis. It's Chris Sops. Whatever. Christops for per- Zing. Per- how would you know how to pronounce? Because that's what I keep hearing is Christops. <laughs> Chris Stops. I just know his last name from Zingas. Pro Zingas. Pro Zingas and Andrew Wiggins. So, um. The last one was the easiest one. Yeah. <laughs> the last two. Dwight Powell and Andrew Wiggins. Andrew Haven't Wiggins. Haven't they both be from Canada? <laughs> so, oh, um. Moutier. Last year, I believe the uh, world team beat the USA team. Um. So, yeah. It yeah, it says it right there. Yeah. Uh, 121, 112. I think, honestly, I like this version better than when they had to draft the rookies and sophomores and Team Chuck and Team Shaq and everything like that. It's pretty cool because, of course, the game is getting more international flavor into it now, so you can do this. But, um, we will. Yeah, um, Daytona 500 is a week later this year. It is a week later. It's on the 21st this year. Ah, gotcha. All right. Um, well, which is good. Spread that shit out. Do you care to pick this? Because nobody's. I right, keep giving shit less. There you go. Um, I'm going with the U.S. I think the U.S. team roster gonna win. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, I think Christoph Superstars will go nuts. They gonna go nuts. And he'll win. Harmony Towns. And he'll win. He'll win. He'll win MVP. MVP. They don't care. They're not gonna play defense. Not true. You never know. They might get into it. <laughs> so, yeah, I got two magic players in there. So. I'm surprised it's only made because he's kind of well. He's been getting plenty of time recently, but uh, props to the guy to make. Look, it. they have to meet a certain amount of foreigners, <laughs> a certain amount of foreigners to make up the world team. So they had to put him in. All right, next you got the Taco Bell Skill Challenge, which now is you got big man and guards. Well, you already had the guards, but now you got the big man in, in the game now. So here's the participants in this: you got Patrick Beverly, uh, Jordan Clarkson. Marcus Cousins, Anthony Davis, Draymond Green, C.J. McCollum, Isaiah Thomas, Harfney Towns. Five bucks, one of the big men fall down. <laughs> Which one? I don't know. Just one of them. I'm, I'm banking on DeMarcus Cousins. <laughs> That's who I'm banking on. Uh, I, 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 Draymond Green is probably the only big man that will have a shot here, honestly. Uh but I, I don't see I don't see a guard losing this. I think he's gonna go to a guard. And uh, Asher Bell is the one that won it last year. One of the big men are going trippy. So um, let me see. I'm looking at something. Oh, okay, all these big mans got a jump shot. Carmen Towns jump shots is eh, it's getting there. But you look at Cousin Davis and Green. They they got jump shots. So that's what's gonna give them a little chance. But um, I'm going with uh, I'm going with uh, Isaiah Thomas. That's what I think he's going to win. I'm going to go with Isaiah Thomas. You came back? <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> he didn't come back. Yeah, he came back in a five foot nine form, <laughs> which is, well, not much taller than what he... This Isaiah Thomas could probably uh, do a better job in the Knicks front office than the other Isaiah Thomas. <laughs> Who you got? I don't care. You don't care. Just run around. <laughs> All right. I know he'll pick out this one. So, Kevin, give you uh, this one here. So Look, everybody better pick the same guy out of this one. 
Three-point shooting contest. You got last year champion Stephen Curry. Oh, oh.